Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the fourth episode of the New Gods podcast. And today we have a, a guest, the very first guest in the podcast. Uh, we have Worm Girl. How you doing, Worm Girl? Hello. That's right. Well. We got rid of that old Frapolo and upgraded him with something better. Exactly. We're never going to have dumb shit takes by that old <laughs> Italian <laughs> motherfucker. We sacrificed Propolo to Grogoroth, and now we upgraded with a brand new party member today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, uh, Worm Girl comes very highly requested from the comments, um, and so today should be a, a pretty good show. Um, Worm Girl, would you like to introduce yourself for the, the two people in the audience who don't know who you are? Hi, I'm Worm Girl. I made a couple of pretty thorough sort of story videos about uh, both the first and the second game and they they got some pretty major traction and that's been kind of my my big footprint that I left in the fear and hunger community um, and other than other than that on YouTube I mostly just do um, I've been kind of branching out into a couple of different things with uh, some playthroughs, some reviews, some other kind of deep dives on other games. I actually wanted to uh, to ask you about those videos, um, because I think you're you're at least a little bit to, to credit for the big the big boom. I think the the first video that blew up was the one that was um, the RPG that hates you. That big video. Yeah, Zoldum's video. Yeah, and and that one that one absolutely banged. And then yours exploded after that too. I reckon what happened was that people saw that one. They're like, okay, this sounds cool. What actually happens in those games? And they type it in and they literally find your videos next. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so what yeah, was... Yeah, so... Sorry, go So ahead. I was just... I was just sitting around on YouTube and there's a YouTuber I watch called Majular. Uh, M-A-J-U-U-L-A-R. And he did a video just about some weird RPG Maker games. And he did a brief mention of the first Fear and Hunger. Um... It was like a five or ten minute just like, oh, I found this crazy game and it's really hard and it's it's got a lot of wild content, but there's something really cool here. And I was watching it and I was like, wow, that is a really beautiful looking game. Mm. And um, Termina had just come out, so I, I was like, I'll check that out. And I bought it and I played it and I was just so blown away by Termina that I immediately, as soon as I had gotten ending A, I ordered... Um, the first game and started playing it and I started looking on YouTube to see like hey has anybody done any like kind of story content like to help explain what I just watched because it's you know it's a little <laughs> opaque and shockingly nobody had and I think it was like a um the game had a little bit of trouble getting traction at first because of its adults only rating mm, yeah. but I think it was also you know just a combination of it not being quite big enough and then the the right people hadn't really found it, and the people who were making content were doing streams like Neko the Circle, or they were doing... Um, Zoldim's video is sort of a, a long-form review, not necessarily a, hey, let's untangle this ball of yarn. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I knew that the, the window was open, and if I um, kind of struck while the iron was hot, I it was just one of those moments where you, you just walk up and you see an opportunity sitting right in front of you. And uh, as I started working on it, I realized how how cool the community was, just going on the um, Fear and Hunger Discord and, um, you know, talking to all the really silly or intelligent or, or kind of off-the-wall people that were orbiting the game. And I, I was like, you know, this is a, a cool community and a game that's really going to blow up, and so I want to be a part of that. And I am very happy to have had the opportunity. So you're relatively new as well then because i started with uh with termina as well i i got the impression you've been around for ages no i um that was oh gosh when was that was that like in february uh well i think the game came out in november i think okay i must have picked it up in like january okay i mean that's that's kind of similar to um what happened to me when when you saw like an empty space there like um because i looked at my youtube analytics because it tells you what your viewers are looking for as well and everybody was looking for fear and hunger lore and i'm like well i kind of like the lore and so i started mm -hmm. digging into it and it just sent me it actually just sent me crazy um and i haven't been able to get out since so 
Yeah, I, I like those. Am I the only one who's been here since like a bajillion years ago? <laughs> Wait, that's right. Like it. You started, started relatively recently too, didn't you, Raccoon? I started five months ago. I watched this video. If you look it up, it's called Fear and Hunger .exe, I think it's like Terminal.exe. Fear Hunger 2 .exe. It's made by a person called Kunsite Waifu. They did a really, really, really good .exe video eight months ago. And that got me into making YouTube videos. And it says here, seven months ago, I made that video, actually. Huh. It's been a while. That's that's why I inspired myself to do the Divide.exe video. Ah, uh, I remember I that one, yeah. It. Yeah, that's how I got into Fear and Hungry Morse, because of that one person making the .exe video. I really got to thank them. Was that, was that your first videos you were making, Reku? That was the first real video that I was like, you know what, I'm... I'm unleashing every single one of my old videos that I had before. I, I'm i going to stop making this, you know, shit posts. but mostly they were just shit posts that I was making. So all the old raccoon videos are lost it. then? Lost lost the media? Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> they are all unlisted in my playlist. But I had this channel since like, since, since I've been 13 years old. Like a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, on, I'm, I'm doing six right now. And, well, I got to say, that uh, Fear and Hunger made me want to do like serious videos and actually care about what I'm making. Mm. Yeah, I, I wanted to be a YouTuber for a while, um, but everything I was, was trying just wasn't really clicking. So I tried a few different things and it just didn't really stick. But um, yeah, yeah, finding finding uh, Fear and Hunger and specifically Termina has just been pretty amazing for me because I've just been, um, you know, my, my videos have been going really well. I've been, been really happy to see that. Mm -hmm. Why'd you get into to YouTube in the first place, Wormgirl? So I like a game called Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. It is a really obtuse survival zombie. It it looks like a roguelike, but it doesn't really play like one. It's more like it's the game that inspired Project Zomboid, which a lot of people I think are going to be more familiar with. Um, it basically drops you in the middle of a zombie apocalypse and says, you know, do what you will. And... Um, it's a really obtuse and con uh, complicated game, so I, I thought I'd make a couple of uh, tutorial videos for it. And the, I, mean, I have an hour-long video about how to throw rocks. It's it's pretty fun. <laughs> but, really. Um, <laughs> well, it gets into like using slings and stuff, but it does. Uh, it is really complicated, but it's very rewarding too. And I never intended that to be like a big deal, but it got some traction. And I wasn't going to, like, try to turn it into a job or anything, but as soon as the, um, as soon as I put out those Fear and Hunger videos and, you know, started getting, like, six-figure view counts, I was like, okay, people are liking this, mm. and I wasn't doing anything else at the time, so I was like, why don't I just uh, commit to the, the channel and see where it goes? And it's been really, really rewarding, so I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, I remember being surprised when I went to a video, I ex uh, went to your channel, I expected a whole bunch of different video essays and stuff, and I'm like, what the hell is Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead? Why is there like a hundred <laughs> videos about this? <laughs> yeah, I've only been like running a channel for like a little over a year now. I have like very little video experience. Hmm. Well, you're doing pretty well then for, for little experience. Well, thank you. Um, why'd you get into uh, YouTube Bones? Uh, I lost a bet. What's in revenge? <laughs> have, have, I revenge not, right? have I not told? I guess I haven't told this story yeah. on the podcast. Yeah, you, you, you explained it. It was revenge. You got fucked. Live on Twitch. Uh, no, no, not the YouTube. Not the, not, oh. that's not, not quite. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> like, years ago I made a bet with someone that there's no way Hololive would come out with, like, an English branch. And I bet if I lost, I'd become a VTuber. <laughs> That's the whole story. So, so you won and lost at the same time? No. No. No, I lost. I, I just <laughs> you fully lost. lost. You've been trapped in this torment ever since. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole story. Yeah, so, never, uh, never bet against the weebs. No. Yeah. It's inevitable. The no, I was March. betting. 
on the weebs. Not against them, I was betting on the weebs to try to keep, to successfully gatekeep their hobby. <laughs> <laughs> and lost. Yeah. Yeah, money will do that. So how come you, you uh, started doing YouTube videos then? You know, that's a good question. <laughs> I actually don't think I, I don't think I can remember right now. Because I remember we were talking about it for a while. Um, Bones actually got me into into playing Fear and Hunger in the first place, so this is his fault. Um, yeah. We're doing this right now. Yeah. So if anyone's angry, yeah, just blame Bones. I was the Bones. one who said, hey, Mal, you should check this thing out. It's exactly up your alley. He was right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think I may have started trying to make YouTube videos because, like, all of the guides online for Fear and Hunger just sucked. And I was like, hey, wait. Instead of, like, editing a wiki or making guides on game facts, I can make money off this. I should make videos. <laughs> yeah, literally, like, how to win against the guard is such, like, a brilliant... It, it's such a brilliant uh, idea that it's it's another thing. I'm shocked that people weren't doing this already. Mm. No one cares. I mean, I that's the thing. They were. <laughs> they just sucked at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... Yeah, the, the guys one at the time weren't very good. I think for Apollo started a bit later. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, one of my favorite bits of advice that I still see thrown around nowadays is go for Chromaller's head. <laughs> that was my only way of fighting Chromaller. If you're spamming Black Orb at his head, you will kill it his was torso faster <laughs> just because it hits more and doesn't have... 10,000 hit points or whatever the wiki <laughs> thought it did. Oh my god. Yeah. The <laughs> Don't use the fandom wiki, by the way. It's like, like the fandom wiki was always bad, but now it's gotten worse, and also there's a better alternative. It's the, like, dot .gg. The fandom yeah. wiki will always be the top Google result, though, because uh, its fandom is owned by Google, and they make ad money for their parent company, so scroll fandom? down a bit. Google owns fandom? That actually explains a lot. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, that's why they have... Uh, uh, search engine prioritization. It's because, like, <laughs> oh, Google's geez. doing evil things like they always do. <laughs> Doesn't help that Goku is in it now. <laughs> yeah, Goku's kind of in Termina. So. <laughs> oh, yes. Wait, does that mean, does that mean Termina can be added to the chart? No! Dragon Ball is actually in its own timeline, unfortunately. It <sighs> cannot be... I cannot... Unfortunately, <sighs> there's no way to currently connect Termina to Kingdom Hearts. Okay, well... We'll have to keep working on that then. Um, maybe in maybe in three. Maybe if they have an analog to the gummy ship when they get people to the space station. Hang on. Um, what about Sergles? Will Sergles be that link? Oh. No, Sergles are like their own weird furry thing. Mm. Don't so they don't branch also, off into any they, of the other games. Uh, I mean, I'm sure people have made Sergle fursonas for something, but that's <laughs> not. Like, a part of a game. because uh, if, if you resort to fan fiction to justify timelines, you've lost. Yeah, that's true. My I... timeline is objectively observable. <laughs> and I can prove every single step of it, and that's why it makes people hurt so badly when they look at it. Actually, that, that brings up the next, um, the next topic I wanted to talk about today. What is your craziest theory you've got about Fear and Hunger lore at the moment? So who's got who's got like a, a wild one? Hmm. I've got one, but it's gonna take a minute. So yeah, yeah <laughs> what you say, sorry, can, you can, you, can you can you say it again, sorry? Oh, so what's your craziest fear and hunger theory about the law that you believe, or you or you think has a good chance of being legit? Well, I said it many times, but Ragnar Valder, it's August. That's not, that's not legit. Like, that's explicitly deconfirmed by the game, though. Listen, listen, oh, listen, 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 listen. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> you're turning into Frifolo now. You're getting close to the mic. You're gonna, you're gonna drink. You're gonna drink right next to the mic soon. I need to get my water. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it, it, I, I, I have some ideas. They're just dumb ideas, but I have ideas. So this is, this is a time for dumb ideas. The one I've got coming is, is great, so... Okay, here we go, first. Okay, 
So, um, you guys may have seen me shit posting about this, but um, so <clears throat> in the first game, you know the four main souls, right? Domination, mm -hmm. endless, uh, enlightenment, and torment, right? In Termina, they're all there except domination. It's not there. Um, instead, all of domination's skills except leg sweep, which is inaccessible to the player. Um, all of them are on the Tainted Soul. Every single one. Including some skills that are split up into multiple skills for some reason. Um, and they all just get put straight back into the Tainted Soul. Um, so, the theory goes that the Domination Soul is actually the Tainted Soul. And it was just renamed and changed at some point. I think I have something to add to that, or... At least a, a logical conclusion I would jump to. Really? Well, so the, the dominating soul is a woman, or at least it has the appearance of a woman. Mm. And um, the last thing we see Darce do in Fear and Hunger, the last bit of content that was added for her was her S ending, which is where she uh, casts Resurrection of the Beloved on, on Lagarde. That may or may not have happened in the story, but... It is logical to assume that if she survived, she would have helped him either get to the throne or come back to life or do something. Um, the act of helping Lagarde, who has clearly gone completely off script in terms of like what humans are supposed to be doing, what if that somehow led to her becoming the tainted one? Well, that was the next it part somehow... of the theory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um... I thought you were. I thought you were done with your theory. I was like. Well, there's, uh, there's, 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 there's two parts. That one's, that one's, the first part was more reasonable, where it's like, okay, that kind of makes sense. And the next part was Das is literally the tainted one in Termina. <laughs> yeah, I buy that. I buy that in a heartbeat. Because again, the, the tainted one is wearing what looks like metal armor. Mm. And she's sitting on a throne. It, yeah. And you would not believe the arguments I've had over this. People hate this theory. They hate it. And I'm like, it's legit. I have people, I have people still telling me that, that, Lagarde is a blood golem. <laughs> like from the blood golem spell. <laughs> yeah. I, I think mean, it's... I can understand why they'd think that. I, yeah. I guess so, but I think it, they get like really up in arms and I'm like, well what about uh what about Domac? He's not a he's not a blood golem. Mm. I think I think it's is? funny. Because you've got like like you've got each sort of big theory sends out shockwaves and people catch up to it at different points. So you'll have somebody who's like just watched like one video from like six months ago go, oh, isn't this what happened? And it's like, dude, you have like 10 hours of lore videos to catch up on. <laughs> here's, a, here's a playlist. It's all my videos, by the way. Give me views. <laughs> um, <laughs> go watch this and this will, this will help out a fair bit. <laughs> but I'm, I'm trying to... I always wonder... Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I always wonder how much of this is is us getting onto the um getting onto the wavelength Miro was on when he was writing these things and how much is just like he never even thought about any of this and uh you know we're we're completely out in the bushes like just totally unrelated I mean, to the story he was trying to tell <laughs> I know a particular example that is both of those <laughs> yeah what's that uh sabbath in the church in termina Yes, yes. I'm partly responsible for this. Is this a very Fire Hunter thing? No, I was going to point out that uh, in the Discord, Miro admitted that the only reason Sabbath got reused was because he couldn't think of a good design for a magic sword and decided to reuse the one from Kahara's ending. <laughs> so I've, I've maybe caused a little bit of, uh, of a problem with the way this is interpreted, too. Um, so the description for Sabbath says it was used by the Vatican to help them against the vampire, to help defend them against the vampire hunts, which makes it sound like the Vatican is defending itself against vampire hunters. And knowing that the basement is filled with blood pools and the guy who runs the church is a monster, like a literal one, and he's using blood rituals to live forever and all this stuff, I assumed that the word vampire in this context means the sort of being that Lagarde and Domek are. We see Lagarde has like vampire fangs, and I mm. assume 
he and Domek are the same kind of like lich kind of guy. And that might just be called a vampire in this world. Um, but, and so that spread pretty quickly. And then later I was talking to Miro and he was like, oh no, uh, that's just a typo. <laughs> Yeah, the I had church to... was doing the vampire hunts, and they were using the sword to hunt vampires. And he's like, "Now, whether or not the people they were killing were actually vampires is up for interpretation." But no, they weren't. Not the sword was not created to protect the vampires. <laughs> I, I I remember. I I didn't realize that was you. I remember that conversation. I remember like, we were like going like, "Oh no," you know, we're having this like massive theory discussions about so the church is infested with vampires and this and that. And it's like, no, no, it's just it's just a mistake. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I... I, I do think they probably are, if, if there are vampires, they're probably affiliated with the church rather than being killed by the church. Just because everything in, in Fear and Hunger World is topsy-turvy, right? Yeah. I mean, I'd assume that they'd be associated with, like, the evil half of the church that's secretly self-worshippers just because that's where blood magic comes from and nothing says vampires like blood. But that's entirely speculative with literally nothing backing it up except, like, oh, yeah, that would probably make sense. Yeah. It's also, it, it's it's really, I think, important for people to understand that Lagarde is Dracula from the from the Castlevania series. Is he? Yeah, and, and uh, Ragnar Valder is Simon Belmont. Well, he's this recurring villain who is somehow immortal, and he's always tied to these, uh, these events, and he keeps trying to come back and getting smacked down at the last second. And uh, one of... A Mido's recurring villain that loses is like... 90% of children's media, though. It's not oh, just sure. Castlevania. Sure, but one of Mino's biggest uh, inspirations is Castlevania. That's uh, true. He did say that Ragnvada was just straight and, up Simon. Yeah, yeah. His, his art is all just straight up Ayami Kojima. Um, absolutely just the same kind of thing you see in um, Symphony of the Night and stuff. And uh, so I'm always looking for you know, what is the inspiration, and then what can that tell us about the characters in the story? And then, you know, you have this long-haired, you know, evil kind of guy with vampire fangs and, and all this stuff. I have some contention with Lagarde being called the villain, but in general, I agree. Well, I, I will say, okay, yeah. antagonist, at least. I'm not even sure he's the antagonist, it's but... not even really an antagonist in one. Not in one, no. No, I'm, I'm thinking mostly in, in Termina, but... No, in, I, in I agree with you. He's I'm... not even, like, really an antagonist there either. He's just kind of there. <laughs> now you mentioned that the games are more about fighting against the whole situation rather than fighting against a specific person trying to stop you. <laughs> it's like you're just thrust I've into looked... a super si shitty situation. Like, the guys don't care about you. You're just sort of there. Like, they don't yeah, even know you're and in the I dungeon. Read a, I read a while back that that was, like, a cornerstone of, like, how how, like, East Asian horror differed from Western horror in the... You know, when that really caught on with, like, Ringu and stuff in the 2000s. Um, and how, like, people were comparing Silent Hill to the more direct kinds of horror you'd see in, in Western media. Whereas, like, in Silent Hill, you're not really dealing with a slasher or a, a bad person. You're just, like, in a, a place that sucks. Mm. Yeah, much it's more crazy. passive take on horror. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's bad vibes rather than a bad person. I'm all about this uh, this Darks Tainted one. You, I'm you've glad. opened my mind. I'm going to, whenever I bring it up again, I'm going to say, see, Worm Girl agrees with me. So that means it's 100% <laughs> right. 100%. If the two biggest lore heads honest... in the Fear and Hunger community <laughs> agree, that means it's 100% canon. My honest opinion is that it's plausible, but it feels like you're Rorschaching what Miro did. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this comes back yeah, to absolutely. like being in the weeds, right? I've I've done little experiments with myself where I thought, okay, what's the craziest thing I can think of that has the smallest chance of being canon? Then can I argue it? And then I can just argue it. And it's like that's a really dangerous spot to be in to be able to argue any stance. Like, because I'm just, I'm just, I. The other three characters, so the other two characters get mentioned, and um. Do you know about the the bodies on the poles? Uh, they're on like the western edge of town. There's like one that's getting pecked by crows, and it's like half alive. You can get to oh, the, the hard and heart one, yeah. Yeah, I know those guys. Yeah, so 
Uh, there was a theory that I'm pretty into that these are the representations of what has become of the protagonists from the first game. Oh. Um, one of them looks very much like Ragnar Valder, uh, and he's dead. Uh, there's a there's one that is headless, which could represent Nasra, who is you know missing his head. Um, there is well, he's missing one... everything except his head. <laughs> yes, yes, but <laughs> technically true. Um, <laughs> there is. Uh... Let's see if I can find these these bodies. Uh, I don't even know what I would look for. Um, there is one that, that could be standing in for Kahara that is dead. And interestingly, the other one, the, the fifth one, is um, it's a man, but it has kind of, you could call it Dar's hair, and the guy is alive barely. And there are crows pecking him, and crows are the symbol of, of the god of fear and hunger. And... Mm. The the theory the going theory was that this was like an Easter egg kind of thing that was like okay this is how everybody wound, wound up you know two of these people are are dead of natural causes two of the poles are empty because Lagarde and Enki are still alive um, one of them is headless because Nasra is uh, he's a severed head and then the other one is is Dars and that's not to say that these people are actually them or have yeah, any yeah. in in story connection it could just be an Easter egg but it's just such an odd little vignette and those things you know we see other bodies that are copy pasted all over town but these four are are just there mm -hmm. and That's if really Dars is holding on as this weird kind of very remote new god then well the, the tainted one the new god is just so weird anyway because she's clearly so aligned with the sulfur god but the new guys are like yeah she's one of us like wh why even bothering asking about her like they, they treat her like she's normal, but she's so clearly different from every all the rest of them. And uh, there's there's has to so, be something about her. There has to be. She can't just be like some weirdo. Yeah, and if she's working she with can. Lagarde, I think. Well, she could be, but because they're all weirdos. But you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's the strongest argument against the uh, Darcy is the tainted one theory. The th the answer is uh, it could just be some weirdo. <laughs> it could be all, all the new guys are no pretty way weird. No really they? decisively disprove the tainted one is just some guy theory. Yeah, it just it just yeah. I mean, it hits me in such a, a strange way because she's just this person who was poised to do all kinds of important things. She would def she would never have left Lagarde's side. Um, and, you know, here he is in Termina, so where is she? And, of course, she might have died of old age or been killed to prolong his life or just died for normal reasons. But mm. also, you know, I definitely think Lagarde is... If he's not knowingly connected to Sulphur, then he's unknowingly connected to Sulphur just because oh, the, absolutely. Yeah. the Foundations of, of Decay has that, um, that tunnel in there and, you know, he was masterminding the... Uh, the logic project, so. Yeah, I 100% agree. Little... He's definitely heavily collected to Sulphur. Um, I suspect it's it's unwillingly because he's just always really been against being controlled by the gods. He's always hated mm -hmm. it. So I doubt he would willingly sign up to be with Sulphur. Um, but he's definitely still reenacting the story of Ormir, which is the story of Sulphur. So I think he's just doing it um, unintentionally. You know? Yeah, even if he's hated by the gods, he's still obviously created by them. Mm. As an artificial life form. Yeah, that was that was what I was going to uh bring out for for my uh my super theory today. Out of oh, artificial okay. life form. Yeah, so one thing I wanted to tack on to the end of yours though, uh Mao, is um The Tainted One does look kind of like it's wearing penance armor. I can see that, yeah. And so, yeah, I don't know. There's something there because Marco's whole thing is about being guilty, and you know, feeling like he's done something horribly wrong, and he has, but he also kind of had reasons, and you know, he was being coerced. But um, obviously, penance armor is worn by the guilty, so mm. something hmm. there. I think. Interesting. But uh, okay, so Lagarde, he. 
is confirmed to not have a soul. I thought it was just a gameplay consideration. There's a lot of things. For example, you can get souls out of the uh, little babies, I think. The the babies that Uterus has. Yeah, I always thought that was nope. weird. I think that's a mistake. Because none of the other artificial beings give souls. It's possible they're producing souls because they're being, like, bothered by Valtiel or something. But it's like a whole crux of this thing is that you can't get souls out of these yeah these like man-made creations so just just a brief aside on uh bugs causing law issues um killing chromola and then double-headed chromola shows up which is which is a bug and mm -hmm. it's like people are like trying to theorize how did this happen like what's going on are there multiple chromolas like it's it's just a bug and we don't know how canon it is because it's been a, a long-running bug so it's mm -hmm. like it's it's you can't really discuss it in the law so, well, I don't really is... think that in particular is a bug because damage from the first fight carries over into the second one. Even if you kill it. Yes, oh, if you kill that... it, he spawns without either arm. Interesting. Oh, that's weird. On top but of also... that, as soon as the uh, double, well, a little bit before the double-headed Chromaler becomes available, the corpse from the first one will despawn deliberately. Mm. Oh, maybe not then. Yeah. Huh. But also the um, the gauntlet is cr is crazy world. It's it's like a nightmare world. So I don't think the normal rules of logic have to apply in the gauntlet. Hmm. I mean, it's just the inside of a god. It's like uh, those still follow rules. It's uh, it's rare okay, like from ten. It, well, it reminds me of of like in the end of a Silent Hill game when you get when you get so deep into Silent Hill that like you know doors are opening into impossible areas and. You know, things like that, where it's, you're getting on another level of existence where reality, as we know it, doesn't really make sense. Hmm. You, you can't be right there. I think it's like half dream world. Like, because it's clearly how based on, on Rose World. So in the gauntlet is completely alien. No, and I don't think it, it would need to be, but I think we're just like a step closer to sort of the the divine realm you know to the the darkness or the 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 abyss you know where it's i mean you're in the body of a dead god of course it's going to be like more divine than the surrounding area but i mean that's also true of the dungeon as a whole since that's part of the body absolutely yeah yeah you're just going deeper in the dungeon the dungeon as we all know is fucked up and weird so it's right, more like, fucked up and weird like time is not passing that's what i'm saying like you know, we know that time doesn't pass correctly in the dungeon, but then when you get further in and get all the way into the the God of the Depths, I think things are starting to get so strange that it, it doesn't seem that weird to me that the Crow Mallard could come back to life in there. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, possible, but the fact that, you know, damage carries over and his corpse despawns, just, it feels like that's a deliberate thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that his corpse despawns and then the second-headed Crow Mallard shows up, that feels like a deliberate design choice well here's the thing right um so the gauntlet is rare's realm which is like closer closer to the dream the dream world where we have all sorts of weird living ideas like the like the rontils um which like bring themselves to life through fear like freddy krueger um and the skin granny um and pocket cat is one too but he's running around the real world um and we know we've got those Crowmaller stories, like because there's that fable book from the from the first game. Um, mm -hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me if, when something like that dies in the real world (in quotation marks), that it can respawn up closer to the realm of ideas and the dream, and then and then the Gauntlet and Res realm is like one step closer to that. Oh yeah, I think that if you killed Pocket Cat, he would not actually be dead. Oh yeah, no. Like if you shot not. him with a gun or something, he might fall over and go like, "Oh, you got me." But then, like, the next day he'd be out, you know, chasing kids around. <laughs> yeah, there'd just be another one. Yeah. yeah, and I think the same thing is probably true of the Sulphur Gang in the second game. Yeah, I was curious about I that. No, I have no specific evidence for that, but the fact that they're all so cavalier about throwing their lives away when it took them so long to get to where they are, I think. Um, I think they have an expectation that they'll they'll be back at some point. And kind of like, you can't kill Michael Myers and you can't kill Jason, right? Even yeah. They die in every movie. Can't kill Art the Clown. He keeps coming back. Um. Right, right. <laughs> and when you kill the uh, the death masks, I think it says that they're still, like, 
that they they could get back up. Yeah, yeah. It says something like that if you examine their body. Yeah, Don is like, I don't know what to tell you, but this guy's not dead. Yeah. I always cut their heads off because I thought they'd get back up like the bobbies, but I don't think they actually do. No, I don't think so. But how terrifying would that be if they got back up after like 10 seconds? Oh, imagine? God, that would be such a great thing to add to, like, masochism mode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. There's a random chance the death masks stand back up once you kill them. <laughs> no. Oh, man. It could even do it, like, uh, you know, anywhere between 10 seconds and 10 minutes. No. <laughs> so just, like, he'll just eventually get up. <laughs> like, if you don't cut their heads off, um, mm -hmm. then they get back into a, a random coffin around the map. Like, they, they resets. It resets. No, them. no, 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 no. If you cut their head off, that just means that they start the next fight blinded and you can't kill them with a headshot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. This is like... <laughs> this limbless torso sprinting straight at you, gurgling and, like, <laughs> spouting blood out of his neck. Uh, fond like memories they, uh... of Ultimate Underworld. <laughs> they, they look like something out of, uh... Uh, one Piece to me, and I don't know if it's just the long nose makes him look like um, Usopp, but something You're about right. the swords makes me think of of that show, and I wonder if there's a because because it's very cartoony and over the top, and that's sort of similar to the designs in that. Show. I mean, I haven't really watched it in ages, but it's similar mm -hmm. to that. It's got that sort of feel, and how he laughs as well. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I've got a spectacularly stupid theory that everyone's going to disagree with at first, except maybe Mouse has heard har part of it. Please. So, uh, I'd prefer if Raccoon went next. Oh, wait, sorry, uh, didn't I interrupt <clears throat> Worm Girl? I was gonna wait for mine, I was gonna do mine last, because it's a long one, and I think there's gonna be some... Okay. ...some discussion. So, we can, we can do Raccoon, and then, uh... ...and then Bones. Yeah. Alright, sounds good. I thought yours was the, the guard's a, uh, artificial being one. Well, whatever. There's more to it, I, I think. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay, Raccoon. What is it, Jones? What's what, your... What was the question? Sorry. Yeah, what's your... Do you have a, a wild fear and hunger theory that you believe? It's just that one that I told you. I, you know I'm not good with theories. Got them in my mouth. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to correct you here because moment? you corrected me last time. You said you don't like talking about lore, but then you said, no, I do like it. I just don't like talking about it. So you, I know you've got some it's... theories cooked up. I know you do. Yeah, but, but, but they're, they're, they're hard to push out, you know? <laughs> you know I, I need to think to not have people What, what have you been doing? What have you been doing for this last half hour? <laughs> Just thinking about you guys going through lore, where I'm like, oh, okay, so surely we're going to move to something else, right? <laughs> God damn it. No, this is the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah. But... God damn it, will your lore talk? Oh, did you talk? Did we talk about the shotgun lock tech at all? Shotgun lock tech? Did we? Oh, did we discuss yeah. that? No, we can talk did about that briefly. That? I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah, we'll take did a we brief, a brief aside for speed running. Okay. Yes, I, I checked on that, on speedrun.com. No one has done anything with that so far. So maybe Levi is not top tier, yet. Oh, did did you want to just go over what what the actual tech is? Well, the tech is pretty much taking the shotgun and going right away and shooting the locks off the gate. And somehow, it's been like seven months, I think, I guess, <clears throat> since no one has ever tried that. And only recently, one of your uh, watchers decided to let us know that it was possible. I couldn't and believe that. now we can that. speed on the game. I, I still yeah, cannot either. believe I was... it. I still like confused. <laughs> and it makes me wonder what else is still, like, buried out there. Yeah, people I, are I, literally I, breaking the game open and digging through the code, and they miss that. And there's multiple triggers for um, for bolt cutters in case you get stuck without a key. They just don't work, but there's yeah. multiple triggers there. Yes, I, I noticed <laughs> that. The, the lock, the... The bolt... The, what was it? What was the, the one that you used to open the gate? The bolt cutters? Yeah. The bolt cutters spawn after killing Harry or something like that. Yeah, like quite interesting. It it spawns after you kill the mayor and you don't get the key for some reason. I, I have people in, in the comments saying it, it definitely spawns if you do. It doesn't like the but it's not useful then because you can just go get the key from his corpse. 
Um, <laughs> it's only useful if you kill Henrik because he doesn't drop any key then and you can legit get self locked. <laughs> so I yeah. think it's just, just an oversight. But there's so many moving parts in this game. I don't I don't blame Miro for having like one soft lock in there, right? Yeah, I I, I will fix you, Miro. Fix your shit. Broken. <laughs> you know he listens to I'm this, just right? <laughs> oh no. Yeah, he he will listen to this shit. <laughs> he listened to the last one. He was taking um, notes for Fear and Hunger Three. The it. last one. He was taking notes down. So it's gonna be yeah. all of our ideas from last time. <laughs> I'm just impressed that no one has used it for speedrun yet. I wonder if it even works for speedrun at all. Well, because I guess the thing is... People have been optimizing it so well in the speedrun community. Yeah, I guess the thing is, you still need to go to Abella's bunker no matter what, right? No matter which ending you're doing. Yeah. I, what, what ending do, you, do they do for speedruns? Is it just A? It's every single one of them. Ending A, B, C. Oh, okay. Even mm. ending A and B in Massive Mode. I guess, I guess B and C, it wouldn't really matter because you still got to visit both anyway. But for ending A, you've still got to yeah. do a Bella. So it's just... And getting the books, I imagine, would be a big deal from the the mayor's house. So, yeah, I don't I don't know. It feels like it's mm -hmm. more going to be useful in a challenge run than a... Maybe. That's what I was thinking. Because what you can do is you can get a shotgun and then blow the gate open and go and uh, plunder the, the orphanage for books. Mm. Yeah, exactly. The only challenge I was thinking of using it was Olivia Wilcherless, but you cannot use a shotgun with Olivia Wilcherless. <laughs> so it's kind of scary. I still haven't thought of a single challenge that is harder than that, or than probably one agility muscle. One agility, one agility muscle, muscle sounds muscle. like hell. Yeah. That well, is if Raccoon's trio. too scared and wants to use speed running to deflect from ridiculous lore theories, I guess I'll go next. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> the God of Fear and Hunger is Sylvian in disguise. Uh, eh? How is that speed running? No, lore theory. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> God of Fear and Hunger is Sylvian in disguise. How does, how does that work? Well, basically, you know how, like, Sulphur and Almer are both Krogora? Yep. And this, well, that whole ascension process is a mess, but we know that the little girl ascended using the God of the Depths. Yeah. The God of the Depths is Sylvian in disguise. Uh, how? How, uh, how does that work? What's your evidence? Is it the big, well, the big luscious lips things. or something? Is that... <laughs> yes, the dick sucking lips. No. Uh, <laughs> well, for one thing, every single enemy there, not the one boss fight, but every single common enemy there is a marriage. That's, That's true. true. I actually had a whole whole long list of things for this. I don't remember most of them right now. Uh let's see. Needleworm is the only healing spell that is not part of the Sylvian tree. Mm. But it is still a healing spell. Uh, most of God of Depth's motivations are not based around destruction or even forgotten things, but they are bizarre interpretations of acts of love for people that are isolated or alone or vulnerable. It's true. Uh... Including that uh, one, one friggin' chick that became the tree. Oh yeah, that was um, that was heavy Sylvian influence too. Yeah, that that's another weird connection, isn't it? Because the 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 chick that became the tree wanted to marry the god of the depths, or, so or she was in love with the god of the depths, or something like that. I, I it it struck me that she was like a sacrifice, like a a. You know, they'll get like a priestess or something. And they'll they'll like ritually marry her to a god, and then she has to live in the temple forever or something. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's no. what struck me as. Dragon Ball has the whole story about that. It, she literally fell in love with it. Oh, okay. And oh god, this is using cut content to try and justify it, but oh, what the heck was it? There is a fourth unused diary of Captain Rudima. Where he talks about the uh, Tree of the Depths in the same way that he talks about the 
crows with all the weird patterns and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I'm in a better condition. I could remember more of these. There's a couple of other things like this, but I cannot for the life of me remember most of them. Hmm. Well, I have something that may work in support of your theory a bit. And that's that I kind of suspect that all of the gods are just like they, the old gods specifically. Um, th they may just be like facets of each other in a way. Yeah, that that's something that I've theorized a couple of times and everyone hates me when I pointed out, but uh, <laughs> the arbitrary classification of specific forces into specific old gods, which seems to have an off lot of overlap is a construction of humans rather than that of something that actually describes the underlying mechanism, the same way humans describe colors instead of relying on the fact that there is just an objective wavelength with no clear delineation. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was about to say that it's like looking at the same light through a different prism. And right. the same, and the conclusion that I got from that is that fundamentally there is only creation and destruction, and it's only Sylvian and Grogoroth, and every other god is one of those two in disguise. Yeah, that is really what it seems like. Um, although I would and change it slightly. Of, yeah, uh, the end result of that is uh, all of those weird protective, loving, growing things that uh, the fear God of Fear and Hunger does would fall under Sylvian's domain because it's a ascendant one made with part of Sylvian's body. Hmm. See it. Um, yeah, uh, like, you know, part of my theory that Grogroth is a sun god is that once a god dies, it leaves its traces behind. So Depths could be the dead or dying corpse of Sylvian, and her traces of just are the actual, you know, traces of Sylvian. Have you noticed that the sometimes uh, Depths is Vigil appears in the game forward instead of backwards. <laughs> yes, and that's been driving yes. me insane. <laughs> so it's not just on the Termina clock, it is also on some of the cubes in the workshop. Oh, is it? Yeah. Back to cube talk. I love cube talk. Yeah. <laughs> I think there may be something there. I And for, for Grogoroth and the Sun, I... So he's kind of similar to the Horned God from, like, Wiccan or neo-paganism where, where he represents like the so the horned god represents among many other things i'm not as as well schooled in this as i could be it's sort of like the duality of you know light and dark and, and creation and destruction but he's all just the destruction side you know he leaves the rest up to sylvian and uh so a thing that is true in history is that one of the first things humans tend to worship tends to be the sun and then as they their societies advance, they they have more and more complex needs and they start inventing other gods to, you know, kind of break up the sun's role of just being the one god over everything. Mm. And so Grogoroth may just be what was like left behind when people moved off of that ancient primordial sun god. Mm. That's interesting. Cause he is Oh, I'd also I'd also like to add one other thing to my theory. Since I don't think I'm actually going to make the lore video because, like, a lot of stuff is happening that's going to make it difficult for me to make videos. But, uh... The reason that the God of Fear and Hunger even exists is part of a long-term Xanatos gambit by Sylvian to make a second attempt at, uh... Well, you remember how in the lore book she, like, fused all of humans into, like, a gigantic pound... Like, a gigantic mountain of flesh? Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. And it like they were still not able to take a form that was able to adequately love her. Mm. Mm -hmm. Logic is her second attempt at that. I think it's her third. Third? Yeah. So all of the enemies in the gauntlet are marriages, and you fight the god of fear and hunger on top of a huge pile of bodies that are both having sex and being dead. And I think that when a god ascends there is a like mass orgy that happens or something to either to generate the power required or just as a side effect of Sylvian's power being so heightened to 
you know, do this massive act of creation. And so when we read about that in the history books, it says one time in antiquity, this crazy thing happened and everybody started having an orgy. Um, that could have just been when Almer was ascended. Hmm. That's interesting. And we see it again in the bunker because we have um, the the elites may be marriages and we have the, um, platoon. the, the platoon, which is certainly a mass marriage, uh, the human hydra. So that's that's kind of what I think has happened is is when a god ascends there just has to be a lot of um a lot of sex and death going on. Hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think that's mostly just a pile of corpses that got fed to the uh god of the depths. How are they fucking? Are they? Uh because it's 90% reused art from the other corpse piles. True, but th no, they are a little different, I think. Yeah, they're, they're slightly like customized to fit into uh, handle the way RPG Maker handles tiling poorly, and but most of them are heavily reused from just like the random corpse piles you find in like the well and whatnot too. But those corpse piles are decomposing, and these all look very fresh, or like they haven't been able to decompose. And some of the positions they're in are like very sexual, whereas the the corpse piles that are just piled up just look dead. Yeah, the sexual positions are the parts that got reused from the bunny orgy. They are really sexual, aren't they? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it in Discord. Oops. Like, I've got an eye for reusing art because... To reuse like that. Also, I believe he made this first because this was in one of the demos. Uh, this area was in one of the demos and the bunny orgy was not in the, the early demos, I don't think. No, the Bunny Orgy was in the uh, earliest 1.0 version. Okay. So was the well pile. The uh, anyway, goblins added way later. I have no doubt that he added, um, that he reused art, but the... You know, I, I think I think there's, um, I think there's an intentionality to it. I don't think he just accidentally forgot to make him stop doing it. I think it's just like Sabbath. It's just, yeah, it's way easier to do this other thing instead. So that's what he did. That's sort of the, the kind of annoying thing about these games. Like, it's really hard to know when something is directly intentional and something is just coincidence. Because there's it's actually really so easy now. All you have to do is listen to me and repeat what I say, and then, you, then you'll be right. <laughs> well, it's like Dark Souls, where people will, will argue over a... Um you know, what seems to be a significant element in the landscape for, for years, and then somebody will figure out that it's just like a texture not loading or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so oh. I've, got, I've got my theory if we're... If were you, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so... Yeah, Mito confirmed that, that Lagarde doesn't have a soul, and it's not clear if he lost it at some point or if he never had one. I suspect I, he never I had one. I assume he didn't have one because he was British. That's possible. That's possible. Um, so, if you look at the uh, the skin bible for Almer, and also the um, the the books for him in the first game, you will find that the story of Almer when he was alive is that he traveled around the world, and got people to follow him, not through acts of military might, but through just his, his charisma. And there is discussion in the, in the first game about how Lagarde, despite the fact that he is a soldier, he's getting like farmers and stuff to like rise up and follow him just because he's this, this very charismatic leader. Mm. And what Almer did was Almer uh, wound up being opposed by the kings of his time. He was imprisoned and executed. And then he came back as this ascended god, and he killed all of them, and he created a new golden age that lasted for hundreds of years. And that's Almer. If you take Lagarde through his sea ending, that's what he does. It's that's almost beat for beat the same story. Mm. And that would just be like, okay, well, you know, it's the Jesus story. It's not terribly uncommon. But if you look at Lagarde's appearance compared to the the different appearances of Almer that we see. The, the first one is a little bit of a stretch because, you know, graphical fidelity being what it is in these games, um, is that his, uh, he has kind of the same face shape as the the idols of Almer that we see, this very this very oval face. 
He's not missing an eye, but he does have otherwise the same shape. But if you look at the art of how Almer appeared in life, he was a much scrawnier figure with long hair, like a very, a very traditionally Jesus looking guy. Mm. Yeah, he was a slab of meat. Um, and we know from um, the skin Bible that one of the stories of Almer is that Vitruvia created him without Sylvian's help in some kind of, I don't know if it's an artificial way, but it kind of sounds like Vitruvia was doing the same sorts of things that Nosramus and Valtiel and Nasra get up to, where they're trying to create life. Mm. Um, Vitruvia may be better at it, but those life forms that those people create don't have souls. And so that has led me to wonder if Lagarde is not an attempt to recreate Vitruvia's work by creating the same kind of Vitruvian man and, uh, you know, putting him into the situation, except Nilvan is one step ahead because she's seen that that's just going to result in another, you know, you might get three or 400 good years out of that, but that's still going to collapse at the end. Mm. So she instead has his child and... Uh, you know, that's how we get the girl, that's how we get the god of fear and hunger. And then the god of fear and hunger is able to beget uh, the material conditions that are necessary to create logic. And I w it would be pretty wild to think that Nilvan is thinking that far ahead, except that she has um, what appear to be powers of, of premonition and stuff. She's the one who hand delivers prophecies to people. She does. You see her doing that with both Enki and Lagarde. Um, we see that in her tower, she's able to show us kind of visions of the past. The old crone, the skin granny that you fight in the end of that area, is what you fight to get Nilvan's soul. Now, she comes out and hands it to you. It's not like you get it from her. But um, in all of the other god areas, the boss of that area is the new god themselves. Mm. And so Nilvan may be modeled after the Norns or the, the Greek fates, which are a young girl, an adult woman, and, a, and an old crone. And these three spin the threads of fate and, and cut them and, you know, measure out people's lives and are sort of associated with the past, the present, and the future. <laughs> and we have in Nilvan, we have a little girl who's associated with her. We have her adult body and we have this um, this weird grandma monster. Um, and l let me just interject if for a moment. Um, yeah. They're the ones with one eye, aren't they? The pass yard between them? Yes. Well, that in some of the stories, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's that one eye symbol again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did Miro just Google uh, mythology with single eye? Let's put it in the <laughs> game. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, uh, the other piece of evidence here is that the Eastern depiction of Almer has a really specific... Uh, let me pull this up so I can drop it in the chat. Is that here we go? Has a really specific pose that he's in, and you see this depiction of Almer in the museum in, in Termina. And it's the same pose that we find Lagarde in if we are too slow in the first game. And you know, there's only so many ways to chain a guy up, but this is really specific. And uh so that is my Almer is a Jesus clone theory. <clears throat> well, so what I need to say about that is uh, Mal requested off the wall insane lore theories, not ones that mostly make sense. <laughs> it's a, it's a really compelling theory. Um, if if I would offer a a tweak to it though, because what's still missing is the mechanism of how they actually made him, right? Sure. Because as far as we know, that cloning equipment, that if, if the, whatever equipment Vitruvia used to make all mirrors is long gone. We have, like, nobody knows where it is. Um, there are a couple of, oh, go on. And so the missing piece might be that we, we might tie it back to the living stories again. Because all mirrors, uh, sorry, Lagarde is obsessed with copying the path of, of all mirrors. He wants to mm -hmm. embody the story of Olmir. If he was a living story, then mm -hmm. he would just do that naturally. And where do we find the living stories? We find them in dreams. And we literally fight one in Nilvin's mind, mm -hmm. in, in a dreamscape. And we know that Lagarde spent a lot of time 
in the dreams. It wouldn't be a stretch to suggest that she literally made him as a living story and then sent him out into the world. I yeah. Think. I think that would, we also that would... have uh, in the first game we have a, a, several different methods for creating people. So when Nasra is in uh, the laboratory, he he's like, "Oh, I forgot how crappy the technology here is," implying that he has seen better technology or expects that technology could be better. Well, that's interesting. If that was the only cloning lab he had ever seen or heard of, I, I expect he would know its capabilities. Hmm. Um, we also see that uh, Nosramus has figured out how to create life in in his laboratory. Um, he does it where he creates the fetus with creation of life one. Um, and also uh, demon seed, although that's clearly a different kind of thing than Lagarde is. Um, mm. But I don't know if, if people know those fetuses from the first game that you can make. Uh, you, I can't make a crafting menu. They're... We can probably assume that. But, um... And then, uh... Yeah, so I think the pods are, are not the only way, but also in Almer's skin bible, there's a different story that says that he was made through some kind of, um... union between a false god and a mortal woman. Which people have used that to point to, like, the girl. That's how she was made, right? Mm. But... What if that's describing the method that Vitruvia used? Like, there's some kind of, uh, you know, this is done through through some kind of sex act uh, between mm. two beings in a specific way, maybe with some kind of a specific ritual. Who knows? Because the uh, the human body is a pretty good cloning pot already. <laughs> it, it does it does all the work for you. <laughs> yeah, fair. Hmm. So, so those are those are my thoughts. Um, I th I think there's there's more to it. I'm not getting. I mean, you know, Vitruvia is just such a big missing piece of. Yeah, yeah. I like every time I think I figure something out about Vitruvia, I just have to step back and realize, like, no, we don't actually know any of this shit yet. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it's. Just... I have, Wait, a, I have you enough for the question. Okay. Very off topic. That just doesn't add to this. Is it okay? Sure. Yeah. Have you ever, has any of you ever stolen an item from an enemy and then gotten a coin toss for it? No. No. Coin toss to steal? Yes. No, no, I haven't seen that. I don't think I've ever. Probably gonna be doing. Really? Yes. It's interesting. <laughs> well, I remember. I don't know if it was a dream or anything like that, but I remember getting a coin toss for stealing against an enemy in Fear Hunger 2. And I'm going to be doing a steal only run at some point <laughs> in the future. And I want to see who it is because there has to be an enemy that has a coin toss. And I failed it at the time, I remember. If I had to guess, I I'd failed say the Pocket Cat because his whole, his whole fight is coin tosses. No, it's not. It's uh, dialogue choices. Um, oh. Yeah, no, you can steal from him for free. He, he gives you uh, catnip. He gives you the candy. Yeah, catnip. Oh, that's right. I wonder who it is because it's so weird. Poe, maybe. I I don't I, I don't have anyone mentioning that there's a coin toss when stealing from someone in my yeah. Discord. I haven't used it that much because I find story steal a bit annoying. But um, yeah, I've never it heard is, that. Yeah. Yeah, I well, probably doing a use for that. steal a lot more. By which I mean at all, if like Kahara came with it. If only it was automatic, like persuade with diplomacy. Yeah, you get a steal at the start. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. We'll see about that. I, I just had that question. I'll, I'll come up with Lord probably with that because there's a coin toss <laughs> for someone. I don't know who it is. Are you sure you didn't just steal before the coin toss turn? No, it was an enemy without a coin toss. I remember. I was like, what the fuck? I'm getting a coin toss for this enemy. What? An enemy without I a coin toss. I don't know who it was. Yeah, the coitus failed, and I was like, oh, you were caught in the act while stealing, it says the text. I was like, what? What the hell? Yes. There are actually a lot of enemies in Terminator that don't have coin tosses, which I, I'm, I would exactly. like. Exactly, and Mira, it was if you're listening. that didn't have coin toss. It was an enemy that didn't have coin toss, now I think about it. Um, Mira, if you're listening, add coin tosses to every single enemy. Every single one. <laughs> Just like me, right? Yeah. But the thing is that they didn't have uh, an item. 
at all. I stole from another enemy with like the same type and they didn't have an item, but the other one had a coin toss for some reason. <laughs> It's so weird. I, I wonder if that it. might be like a, a buggy system that is still like half in. Maybe. Yeah. Like maybe. Ner nerf steel by giving it a coin toss every time you try and use it. <laughs> I really want to do it, but man, I feel like I need someone to test with. I cannot test alone. That's what stream chats are for. <laughs> <laughs> also, man, look how big Almer's legs are compared to his arms. Oh, he's doing those squats. Yeah, bro doesn't skip leg day. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so do we have any more any more crazy theories? I think we've... I think one theory that exists and it's actually real is that Tanaka is probably either possessed or something along those lines. Tanaka possessed? No, no, no. Tanaka, Tanaka is, is uh... Sylvian in disguise. <laughs> no, 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 shut the fuck up, you. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <You're> your time. <laughs> he, has a, he has a hat with 1% otherworldly resistance. Why? All the, all the clothes have otherworldly resistance. But why does Tanaka have one when he's nothing? He's no one. He's just a worker, right? But, like, everybody's clothes have otherworldly resistance. Do they? That's, like, what... But yeah, why like, is it uh, only 1%? Is that it's different just from a the hat. Because it's a cheap hat. Yeah, like, um, what is the sweater? Like, I haven't seen person? any other character or item that gives you, like, 1% of anything. Just Tanaka, just with that 1% of the world resist. Hmm. And then, at the end of, like, day, day, day 3 morning, I think it is, you see him, like, standing still, looking at this, uh, at the place where you get the effigy. Just completely changed. It's so weird, to be honest. Hmm. Such a weird character. Wait, I feel like he's Tanaka like, on day three morning. He morning? Yeah, lives that morning. long for you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, did, I, I did a video where I had to without reference you make it by the way. I had to look him up, and it was the worst thing ever. <laughs> day three morning, he lives if you have uh, if you sacrifice uh, Marco. Yeah, keep Tanaka alive. He has a lot of different um, paths. Maybe I think Marina might have the most, but Tanaka's you, there's a lot of different. There's a lot of different paths you can you can go with him, a lot of different triggers. And you can get him yes. to like the base of the tower naturally where he fights. If August is alive, he'll fight August. Um and, and get utterly fucking bodied. Um He's got that speech in the in the prison where he talks about how he's gonna become the hero. I left him there and I was like, oh I hope he doesn't go fight Marco and he, he doesn't. I don't know why he has that speech, because he doesn't actually go fight Marco. But yeah, he can moon scorch think, there as well. Or not moon scorch. Yeah, I think something's uh, buggy because he just turns hostile in there. I think I've, I've seen different dialogue elsewhere where um, I think if you don't talk to him there, he has a chance of doing that, where he turns hostile there because he's going crazy I, from the mold. I don't know what the exact triggers are, though. I wish more characters would would treat the game like they're in a battle royale. Oh, yeah. my God, yes. Yeah. Like, yes, that's, for God's sake. So that's something that bothers me about Termina. There's not a lot that I'm critical of in these games. Like, oh yeah, there's a couple of bugs. Um, oh yeah, Miro could use a proofreader. Beyond <laughs> that... Um... No, wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, Ragnarok. No, Baldur's sorry. Oh, yes. that. Go ahead, please. The, um, the broken English in the first game and a little bit in the second game is one of the charm points and I would not change it for the world. Not, I wouldn't change it. <laughs> I love it. I, I legitimately think it adds to the unique. otherworldly atmosphere of the games and I really like it. Anyway, I, think I just wanted to say that. Critical. <laughs> <laughs> I worked as a proofreader in my last uh, my last real job. You I'm... must be suffering playing these games, then. <laughs> uh, kind of. I mean, there's an attitude on the internet now that it's kind of passe to be hypercritical of like grammar and stuff. So, so I'm done. Why with would that. you listen to the internet's opinions unless they're mine? They're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry for the interruption. Um, yeah. Yes. So I wish. So the only time in the game that a character who is not an antagonist the whole time, like um, Caligura, is is terrible the whole game. So mm. it's not surprising when you see him, you know, beating somebody's head in. Um, the only time somebody really surprises you with this is Henrik when he poisons everybody in the the bop, and people are like, "Oh, I can't figure out why he would do that." It's like, 
Well, he's in a death game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, why yeah, wouldn't he exactly. do that? <laughs> I, I, I had that like, challenge. Wow, I can sweep what, and just leave. And not only that, yeah, yeah. but like, getting dying of poison in the bop is like the least bad way to go possible yeah. in the entire game. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, Have you seen what the, the clown does? For the story. <laughs> yeah. The setup yeah. for the story where the battle royale is only demonstrated through like a dream rather than like, you know, do the anime thing and a stuffed doll comes in and kills your teacher and says, I'll kill you next if you don't start killing each other. That's a lot more persuasive and gives a lot better grounding for characters to start killing each other because they know that it's real. Yeah. When it's only just a weird collective dream, it's really easy for them to dismiss and have it make a lot of sense and not actually have a battle royale in the battle royale game. Yeah, I think yeah. Karen feels like the only one like that that's... treats it like... Sorry. Well, I was going to say, it makes me wonder if like that's what Needles is doing. Like, is Needles supposed to be prompting people to get off their butts? Because the, the people he goes after first are pretty passive. That's true. And you do see him really early, don't you? Well, potentially really early. Mm. But he's just a random thing killing. He's not operating under the uh, threat of, if you don't start killing each other, I'll start killing you. And even if he was, you can just have, like, four guys band together and overpower him. Mm. Which again just undermines the premise Ugh. it does it w I, re I reckon like i was about to say that karen is sort of the only one that sort of is really wary of other people for a while but even then she sort of gets over that um mm -hmm. it would be good to have more of the characters at the start going like okay don't come anywhere near me because you're going to try and kill me or i'm going to yeah, kill you Osa first that, that sort of stuff and there's just no discussion yeah, like does that? that once oh it does and it'd be cool if like you know well, he does that once if you um if he's like in the town, he'll be like sitting down, and you can try to go near him, and he's like, "Hey, don't come any closer, or I'll zap you." Right. Like, well, Osar does that. Yes. Yeah, he's like. So I'm the thing friendly, about it is like he does it way too early into the story. I feel like, I I think the characters evolved into, you know, threats because of the time limit getting like closer, closer and closer to the end. I think also being able to just fight you right away, and also having a fight with August as soon as the game starts kind of kind of weird to be I, honest for me. I absolutely think that August just shot him because he saw a yellow guy in the dark yeah and he was like it's Kaiser maybe yeah yeah it's like <laughs> you're the only other person that has agreed with me on that theory worm girl nobody no, else wants to agree with me on that it's like it's obvious <laughs> and he even used like his green arrow yeah those are for Kaiser <laughs> I mean maybe but eh. is there any any other interaction with, with Osa and August no uh, that's part of no. no right like as, as friends no none None. It's kind of weird, though. Um... Yeah, I think if you had, like, Prekele, like, showing up in your dreams and torturing you if you didn't kill someone or something like that. But the thing about yeah. it is that, it's, that it would... happens in day one afternoon. Like, it's way too fast. I think he gives up way too fast on the thought of having allies. Well, yeah, Percolate I think, doesn't I think want to, what... is the thing. Percolate can't tell you to do it because that goes against the game. Because the whole point yeah, is to says... find someone who's bloodthirsty. So that's why Percolate is passive. Right. But... The, the other contestants you... should 100% be more violent and more, or at least, like, more wary. They're just, they're just besties. And it's like, that doesn't make any... Some characters think... that works with, like Marco, he's fine. It makes sense he's for fine. them to be besties because there's no sort of Damocles hanging over their head saying, hey, you have to kill each other. Well, actually, if you talk to Marco on the train, he says that um, on day three, he says that, like, he, he's, like, clearly, like, losing it. And he says, he keeps saying, like, I, like I feel like my my sins are gonna catch up to me, and it's it's making me go go crazy. And you see, you hear something similar from from Tanaka in the prison. And what I hope, what I wish would happen is that um, the characters would start out kind of standoffish, and if you talked to them or like did certain events, they would become friendly enough that they wouldn't turn on you. But if you didn't do that, they might it might trigger events where they they attack you mm. because they you know they have enough pressure from the moon telling them to kill and they've kind of figured out what's going to happen to them if they don't because moon scorching is supposed to be your punishment for not playing the people in the in old town even say that when you when you walk up they're like you know, uh you can't just run away you know we're the ones that that tried to quit yeah it seems like moon scorching is meant to be it's meant to be double duty it's your punishment if you don't do it fast enough but it's also like the moment you snap and decide to kill other people then you moon scorch as well and i think that's where it, it sort of feels a bit off 
because they're not really in their right mind, so it doesn't feel like proper sort of narrative uh, narrative yeah, reward the for the characters. Come, I think the moon scorching should come before the the, the psychotic snap, right? Like, if if uh, if Marco turns into a monster and and throws Tanaka out a window. That makes sense, but if Marco throws Tanaka out a window and then turns into a monster, it's like, well, he was playing. Like, why? Why did you do that? He was he was yeah. doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah, it's. I think I think it's a bit of a it mirrors in a bit of a hard situation there because you can't get the because if he the way it is now the snap and the transformation are the same timing, it's the same thing mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like a good delivery. Like it's not. It mm -hmm. just doesn't feel like um, it's satisfying delivery. But then you're right. If you, if you snapped and then moon scored later, then it doesn't feel fair. Because he's doing right. what fact, you was asked to, so it's it's tough. Yeah, and it makes yeah, me wonder, like, why does why does Kaligura scorch so early? Because he's he's like doing his what he's supposed to be doing more than anybody else. And he loves it. Yeah, he's in his prime. He's a he's basically a Silver Cop member before transformation, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the issue with that is that the actual premise is therefore you get punished for killing people, which is all the more reason to have everyone not act like it's a battle royale. Yeah. 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 It, it's, Hero it's needed tough. to read more shitty manga. <laughs> <laughs> too good of a writer. A little bit. Yeah. He focused too much on coming up with cool Silent Hill designs and not enough on reading weed trash. Yeah. More read more trash, Miro. <laughs> more slop. Let's go. The designs are really good, though. I love all the designs. I love the Moon Scorch designs. Which one's your favorite, Moon Scorch? Cocoon. My favorite has to be Levi. Levi? I will always say that. Levi. I love it so much. I, there's a lot of people who just hate, straight up hate Levi because of the sound that he makes when he's Moon Scorched. Oh, it's terrifying, isn't it? I think it just it? adds up to that feeling. Yeah. yeah. The feeling so of sad. what is that. Like, I don't think anyone has not gets gotten scared for that sound. The and sound makes it. Levi. It just, There's ooh. that scene where, where Karen and Marina don't even recognize him when he's sitting yeah. at the desk. That's really sad. Yeah, it's... Yeah. My it's favorite is, is Marina's. I think it's a really good and also kind of tasteful um, uh, delivery on what her her like internalized fears and, and you know the, the, the external pressures acting on her mm. kind of all, all represent. Yeah, cool fight too. How yeah, it's like it's. I think is it the only fight with like that much randomization in it? Because she can choose the different sigils. I think so. Because usually fights aren't that aren't that different. They usually have like you in know three or four abilities to pick from. Yeah, in a lot of ways, Marina feels like the main character of the game just because she has so much stuff like that. Mm. You know, like and, if you're you know, playing as her when you do on the, the center domain, of the title you know, screen. Yeah. <laughs> She was also, I think, the first... Um, she and Levi were the first characters coded. Mm. Um, which is why there are some bugs, like why she can use the the mauler. She can use the mauler? Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. It, yeah, it, it turns has... into a knife. It turns into a knife. <laughs> yeah, just the animation, though. The weapon <laughs> works. Yeah, it's, it's still... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I think my favorite Moon Scorch design has to be Karen's. I think it's just the prettiest. The Valkyrie. Oh, yeah, it's really good. Have you I, seen the I uh, wish painting Karen that it's gone would from? have. Sorry. Have the... you seen the painting that it's taken from? Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah. Awesome painting. What, what's it called again? Yeah. It's um... Lohi. Lohi. It's, the, um, it's one of the, basically the, the main Finnish um, evil kind of deities in their pantheon. Okay. They have this... Like their their main guy is like this this folk hero this Gandalf looking dude who's fighting her in the painting I'm forgetting his name, but um, Lohi is like I don't want to say like a Satan figure but like a um, feels more like like a like a Tiamat or something like a like a like a god that's an explanation for the bad things in the world but not like a um, not like a temptress of men or anything. Okay. Do you think? that the law behind Lohi relates to Karen at all, or is it just a visual nod? I think it's a bunch of things. Um, so I think Karen, I mean, obviously there's the, 
uh, there's the fact that you know she's a they call her a vulture and and there's all that. I think there also may be some wordplay there about her being a harpy, which is a a thing you would call a opinionated and loudmouthed woman. It's like a derogatory term, mm. and it's also a, a bird lady. Uh, but Lohi specifically is like the source of a lot of the evil in the world, which I don't think tracks to Karen very much. No, she was never positioned like that. I mean, she is a journalist, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Not a but modern think, journalist, I think, though. I think Karen is one of the more heroic characters in the world, at least um, in how she's positioned. It's not necessarily in how she behaves. Yeah. Yeah, she does. I I need I need more of uh, caring in the next mm -hmm. update. To be honest, I yeah. feel like she's just empty. Also, um, you know, Salmon Snake in the first game, uh, Salmon Snake in Finnish is how you say dragon, which a lot of people know. It's uh, Lohi Karn. I, I'm butchering the pronunciation, but um. Just give it the most American Texan pronunciation you can and try to deliberately offend Finnish people so they Low laugh. Lohikarn! Lohikarn! <laughs> um, the initial... That is a... That word is like a corruption, though. Originally, it was it was Lohikarn, which is uh, Lohi's snake. Oh. So That's that was how you said dragon in Finnish, and the word got, like, corrupted over time. And, uh... That's why I think the salmon snake is like what a dragon is in in 1590 because like the age of, of mythology is over and now we just have like stupid river monsters. <laughs> I one, one of those small theories that I really like is that uh salmon snake is actually a lizard is actually a blight as a lizard man new god. Oh no. I like that theory. <laughs> I like it. It's not that there's like any proof other than the name, right? But <laughs> I, I I reckon that would be cool. I mean, he's also like a giant lizard thing. That's true. Yeah, he's, he is literally a giant lizard thing. So, yeah. His his skin's not all cooked off though. No, yeah, but he's not wandering around in the void like the other ones, which yes. cooks his skin. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and he, and the lizards do hang out near him. So that's true. And he's pretty much exactly as much of a pushover as most of the new gods. <laughs> My moonless always bites his eye out right away, and then. <laughs> he's just kind of done. Yeah, Mundus is actually... I may as well talk about this here, since I'm going to make a video about it eventually. Mundus actually has a really interesting AI script. Mm. Oh, yeah. I wanted to make a whole thing about auto battlers, but basically Mundus will always target the limb with the lowest hit points. I didn't know that. I thought she just kind of went random. People think that because if you target the same limb she is going for before she hits it, then she will have to attack at a random because it'll reroll where she attacked. Okay. But she always goes for the lowest HP limb, which means she'll never hit the torsos due to the way torsos are coded. Hmm. That's interesting. Other undead, like, undead and auto-battlers don't work that way. They have a 50% chance of going for the lowest HP limb and 50% chance of attacking randomly. Until you start teaching them attack skills, at which point the whole thing becomes more complicated, so I have to make a whole video about it. I wonder if that's meant to make her seem intelligent compared to them. Well, Moonless is um, best girl, so... Maybe. Why, why is Kalev so bad? Why is what so bad, sorry? Why is Black Kalev so bad compared to Moonless? Oh. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, you like I have the no idea. <laughs> Mechanic-wise or the lore explanation of it? Um, Goats mechanics, don't please. have sharp teeth. Mechanics? Okay, so mechanics. She's not, or he, is not uh, made like uh, Moonless. They're, the goal is not focused on attacking the lowest HP limb, it feels like. This goes to the point that it's not going to go for headshots all the time. It may go for the head, but it doesn't have that high chance of hitting uh, something that will not hit, right? Mm -hmm. Because in when you see Moonless, Moonless just goes for the head and usually most of the time he gets a headshot. With Black Caleb, I think either, either Miro forgot to like Put that in, or he just ignored it completely. Moonless doesn't actually have an accuracy buff. Really? But how does Moonless always get the headshot? More than any other character. 
her knife yeah, is... Yeah, she, she, she's going oh. for heads every round, whereas the player is not usually doing that. That's yeah, true, I know, I yeah. Know, but Caleb does also try that, and zombies also do try that, but they don't really have the they accuracy. They also make attacks endless. for the head much less frequently, since they don't have extra attack, and also uh, don't have the same AI coding to attack the head if it's uh, one of the valid targets. Hmm. You know what it also could be? Maybe it could be extra turn bullshit as well. Mm -hmm. No, we don't know. Mo yeah, Moonus gets the extra turn, that's which Caleb yeah. doesn't. And Black Caleb doesn't. Yeah, yeah and Moonus does bleed for free, whereas Caleb, I don't there's think There's a lot does. of glitches when it comes to extra turn in Final Hunger 1. For example, if you finish an extra turn with Moonless, or with anyone with an extra turn, and you use, um, what is it, Hidden Whispers, it's bugged and you cannot use it until you save the game. <laughs> really? Outside of battle. Yeah, it's just bullshit. Yeah, just bullshit. there's a bunch of really interesting glitches with extra turn. I haven't figured out how to do it consistently. Yeah. But on certain fights, there's a way to finish an extra turn that allows you to skip the uh, remove blood golem from the party script. <laughs> so you just keep blood golem in your party? Yeah, you can do some fun skills, and the next time you summon him, he'll have them. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's So nuts. if you have, like, a... a spare thing yeah. of uh, Black Orb. You can toss it on Blood Golem, and Blood Golem always spawns with Max Mind. Wait, so he's in the, he's like in the menus? Yeah. Does he have a portrait? No, he can't. It's blank. Okay. The portrait is an empty file. Yeah. That's pretty funny. But yeah, you can just teach him Blood Golem, and then he can just run around. You can spend five hit points with Greater Blood Golem to summon something that's just gonna cast uh, <laughs> Black Orb for the next five turns. Can, can you equip stuff on him, or will <laughs> that, like, get deleted? Uh, if you could, if you had anything that he could equip, it would stick with him when you resummoned him, but he, his equipment list is nothing. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, my, my speaking favorite. of things that you can equip to others, did you know that you could summon Bloodsword or Longinus in Fear Hunger 2, remove it, and give it to someone else in your team? Really? That <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. That's funny as. <laughs> you can have four Bloodswords or Longinus. <laughs> Do they Wait. all disappear at the end of the fight? Yeah. Mm. Is that is that ever useful? I guess Longinus is alright. Longinus and uh, Longinus and Bloodsword are pretty good if you wanna one shot enemies in the torso. Longinus and Bloodsword one shot any enemy. But if you wanna one shot an enemy, are you gonna spend Four turns the thing about it is that you need Spice Forge White. That's the thing about it. Mm, okay. That's how you make it worth it. Huh. Or an easy turn. Either of which. Yeah, I had a uh, first Blood Sword on my first playthrough, and uh, it wasn't the most broken thing, but it certainly got the job done. Yeah. Does um does Blood Sword scale on magic damage or physical damage? <laughs> it scales with physical damage. Okay. I tried that run with you know, trying to go with magic damage. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna mix magic damage with critical chance. It's gonna be amazing. Nope. Because <laughs> I was like, man, fucking Chuck Chucks and Death Mask are amazing for magic attack, right? You can get like 700 magic attack. Please work. No, it didn't work. <laughs> Not even the the Heartless One weapon either. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Virtue doesn't scale with magic either. It's like, ah, okay, sure. Well, that, that would be so broken if it did, though. It would be beautiful. <laughs> My my, uh, my favorite moonless fact was dropped by Miro not that long ago in the Discord, and someone asked why is moonless so big in Termina, and he said that that's just how big those get. <laughs> and, oh. I, I always thought Damn. it was because she had she had miasma stuck in her, and it was like giving her powers or or something, or she was eating monsters and absorbing their power and becoming huge and living hundreds. No, that's just how cave wolves are. Wow, that's cool. I guess that shoots down my new god theory. <laughs> <laughs> new god Moonless, how great would that be? Right? Um, Moonless sits on the throne at one point, doesn't know what's going on, but comes back giant and is, like, cool with it. <laughs> Moonless, what's sit. What's that? <laughs> the peeing one? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, she pisses on the throne and gets this. <laughs> you, uh, you approach the new god altar, and instead of blood, it's just pee that fills up the, the altar. <laughs> the new god new rises god out of the pee. Just the ritual circle. Actually, um, that reminds me. I I have a theory that I um I cooked up last night. 
Um, actually, uh, yeah. because I was re-watching one of your videos, uh, Worm Girl, and you, you offhandedly mentioned okay. something. Yeah, what do we got? So, for a long time, people have been wondering why Moonless has Miasma and Black Steel stuck in her. No, everyone's like, oh, it's just, it's just ha-ha funny reference, right? And it is pretty funny. But, okay, hear me out. Here's what happened. So, Rag and Valda obviously recruits Moonless when he's in the dungeon. Mm-hmm. And we know he, he probably kills Salmon Snake because we've got the Salmon Snake rune and Termina. Mm -hmm. So that means he, at the very least, started his campaign to kill the monsters in the dungeon. Um, whether he finished his campaign is a different story, but he at least started it. Mm -hmm. So there's a good chance he killed the original Crow Mauler, took the Crow Emblem key, and got Miasma. Somebody did, because Moonless obviously has Miasma stuck in it. Or they, like, swept the door. <laughs> yeah, or they break down the door. <laughs> um, um, so what I think happened was that Ragnarvada took Miasma, went crazy with it, and attacked Moonless. Stuck it in Moonless, and then he was like, oh, I'm not crazy anymore because I don't have the sword anymore. And it's just stuck in Moonless. And they're like, well, we can't take it out. Mm -hmm. But then Miasma is messing with Moonless's head. So... What they did was they get the one sword in the game that has a purifying effect, black steel, and they stick it in it. I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah, that, that, that makes, makes sense. That they makes a lot more out. sense yeah. than the theory that I was going with. Because I, and I and I just and I just sort of came up with that when watching your video, Worm Girl, because you mentioned it in black steel. Because there's where you find black steel, it's the one patch of the thicket where there's regular ground where the thicket can't grow over it, because that's right, where black right. steel is stuck. Right. So. That, that was that's my theory as to why those two swords specifically are stuck in her. So here's a question though. Why is black steel there when the the phantom's body is all the way over on the east side of the caves? That's Assassin a good question. Because he's um you get his stuff by um you you get blue sin and then you go east from from the area when you get back and. <laughs> His like bodies there with his um yeah with his gear. I mean, it's basically just one floor down. I guess he could have like stuck it there and kept walking or something. Or hmm. he tripped. He tripped <laughs> and the sword like fell face point first into the ground and then he like starved to death because both of his legs broke. <laughs> That's maybe, my theory. Maybe he. Knew that was, he was also going my theory for the swords and moonless. By the way, uh, my theory was that like Ragnarvald just had miasma and black steel sitting around the house and moonless tripped into him. <laughs> a lot of people tripping in your theories yeah it explains a lot of things <laughs> like no 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 your honor i didn't murder that guy by pushing him out of a plane he just tripped <laughs> <laughs> um yeah well did anybody else have any other any last minute theories before we wrap up Hmm. I'm still waiting for Raccoon to do something crazy like you promised. Yeah. Hmm. Give, give us something, Raccoon. Would you like to give... Would you want me to give, like, a dumb thing that I could say? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll argue it. Down. We'll argue it. Oh, well, yeah, maybe you will. Give me your dumbest thing. Yeah, we'll argue for it and we'll justify it. I'm gonna give you this one, okay? This one is gonna like destroy me and destroy you as well. Any theory that you can come up with is real. That's absolutely true. Yeah, it is actually. I was actually going to use whatever you said as a way to explain <laughs> that you can justify basically anything in a story yeah. that doesn't have a lot of uh, concrete <clears throat> answers. Yes, exactly. This is the fear and hunger world where many characters are born with a soul that just completely defines their lives. And some characters don't even have a soul. I gotta say that this is not like real world where anything makes sense, right? There are characters who fight others mm -hmm. for no reason. And these characters have big stingers showing up. <laughs> there's floating heads, there's gods that you can get magic from. When you have sex, you can fuse with another person. There's so many things that just defy reality. So anything that you can come up with theory-wise can be real for you as long as you have enough to stand your ground with. 
And I was you going to believe in yourself. Yeah. I mean, exactly. that's also true in real life, though we typically call that schizophrenia. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it, yeah. The thing about it is that Mira is making this game and he's coming up with the ideas that we are giving him more than likely as well, which we are helping him making what it is going to be the future, right? Oh, no, that's Being terrible. Hunger. That's why we're going to have. Yeah, I it's mean, so horrible. I can't, I can't just, Jones, oh man, the most terrifying thing theory. that you could ever put in there would be that cute vampire oh, girl. Oh, yeah, no, no, no cute vampire girls, 100%. Oh, I swear, if I see a single one, I'm going to come up to you, Jones. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, that's mostly what I'm going to say, uh, lore-wise. I, I have a hard time saying that since my theories are usually suck, but I like that they're real for me and to me only. Well, we can actually justify that in universe too, um, because of the sliding scale between reality and idea. And once, um, and there's reason to believe that if people believe in something hard enough, it starts happening. Especially um, so once logic that exactly uh, comes online. Is, exactly, yeah. That is also why uh, there's also a theory in one of the in one of the games that he played at one point. I don't know if you know Persona Two mm -hmm. for the PS One or uh, PSP. I'm playing it, no. That's that right. Hitler was story. So yeah, the story is about uh, characters making up theories, and these theories, whenever a lot of people believe on, on it, they become a reality. So that's pretty much the whole story, trying to make theories a reality, hmm. so that they can uncover a mystery. Okay. It's quite, it's quite amazing. Oh, wait, was and that, that the one that amazing. had, like, that famous World War II politician with yes, his son. Yes, yes, yes. I have pasted an image into the chat for everybody. Oh, I want to play that oh, game. Oh, which chat? Sorry. It's just straight up the game. Which chat? Sorry. Oh, uh, the podcast voice chat. Oh, the open open chat. I yeah. Yeah. The, thing, seen the this. secret thing that nobody ever looks at. I actually forgot that, that existed. I, uh, I once <laughs> secretly <laughs> filled. I once secretly <laughs> filled a Discord that had one of these with like Mbreg pictures for like eighteen months before anyone noticed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I do have another theory. Yeah. Mm. Betel. The Reckonvalder lactating theory. This is Betel Almer Mbreg. <laughs> so, so Betel um, is oh that one I know where this is coming from. He's yeah. a he's somebody who became a new god at or right after Almer ascended, mm. and he's depicted with um, a big hollow in his swollen stomach. Oh, he is, isn't he? Yeah. And uh, so me and um, a a chatter on um, the Fear and Hunger Discord were kind of joking that that maybe he he. Artificially burst Almer in there somehow. That's terrifying. Um, and so that's oh. the Almer Empreg theory. Now the problem with that theory is that it's going to get all the Tumblr fangirls over here, and therefore can't possibly be true on you know moral grounds. We should each say which what, what our favorite ship is. Oh no, <laughs> we could, no. but that would be legally oh, no. obligated to honor kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Born girl, no, I, I need my photo back. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, looking forward to seeing y'all next week after we honor kill Worm Girl and yeah, replace her with yeah. Profilo sorry, Worm Girl. Yeah. Um, we have to kill you now. Um, thanks for coming in. It was good. Uh, <laughs> so, so where where can we find you, Worm Girl? Where where can we find your stuff? Uh, I'm on YouTube, Worm Girl. Uh. That is at Mutant Worm Girl on YouTube, or just search Worm Girl. I'm there. Uh, Patreon.com slash worm underscore girl. Uh, that's about it. I, I try to keep everything in one place. Okay, these links will be in the description of the video as well. So please go check out check out Worm Girl stuff. It's great. Um, oh, also, I, I keep forgetting to mention this, but the podcast is also now on Spotify. So... It's, the, the SEO of the name The New Gods is actually kind of bad, so we might be changing the name soon. Um, it just won't come up <laughs> on Spotify search. Um, but uh, I'll put a link to that in the description as well, so maybe you can go see it. <laughs> the newer gods might work better, though. Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll try something out. We'll, we'll, we'll fix it up. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. But yeah, so thank you all very much for coming in. Uh, any, any last messages? 
Any last words before the honor killing? Uh, thank you all so much for having me. I uh, it was a lot of fun. Get to uh, get to chatter all my stupid ideas to an audience that. Uh, well, I guess that's what I do normally anyway. But it was fun. <laughs> we'll have to get you back sometime when Frapolo isn't dead. We'll yeah, uh, okay. resurrect him as a self occult member, and and we can uh, we can have another chat. And then he can kill me again because he's a killer clown now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> someone Photoshop a rainbow afro on his night helmet. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. <laughs>